got a little friend over here. You are so cute. You're killing me right now. First of all, I just want to say welcome to my channel. Uh, if this is the first video you've seen of mine, uh, my name is Sersha. I make video essays about internet aesthetics. I'm hoping to branch out more into talking about film as well. I do vlogs sometimes. I've not posted a video in a while. Um, I started getting followers and my scene kid video kind of just keeps getting views and it kind of stressed me out and I was just thinking about like all these tens of thousands of people uh, watching my videos and kind of freaked out. I am really grateful and it makes me happy that there were a lot of people who loved that video and it makes me happy that people like my content enough to subscribe to me but I definitely got a little overwhelmed for a while and just didn't want to like put myself out there and be on camera and like open up the floor for criticism. I've had this video scripted for a very long time but just haven't really felt like being on camera. So I'm just gonna film it and uh, hopefully the editing process won't be too brutal. Today we're going to talk about the kid core aesthetic which I think was mostly popular on TikTok but I did see it on Instagram and Tumblr as well. Kidcore is a little similar to the Y2K aesthetic, but there's also influences that date back to like 90s Japanese fashion. There is some debate on Kidcore where the influences come from, where it started, uh, when it started. So if you have a different opinion than me, like feel free to comment, but let's try to keep it nice and respectful. So first of all, let's talk about what Kidcore is. The name is pretty self-explanatory. Kidcore is comprised of bright rainbow colors, toys, games, and anything a kid would enjoy, especially a kid in the 90s or early 2000s. The color scheme is mostly just the entire rainbow but some people prefer to do a primary color scheme or pink. Another name you hear for kid core sometimes is rainbow core. Of course, they aren't exactly the same thing. You just see those terms overlap. If you search kid core on Pinterest, you see images of children's stuffed animals, dolls, video games, cartoon characters, and toys such as the little plastic trinkets you get from those coin operated machines at like the mall in Chuck E. Cheese. When you think about kid core, just picture Happy Meal toys, transparent 2000s technology, stickers, and candy. I like kid core because it embraces the carefree, happy feeling of being a child and just enjoying fun, simple things. There's definitely a lot of cartoon characters like Rainbow Bright, Hello Kitty, and other Sanrio characters, Disney characters, uh, 90s Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon shows, Care Bears, Magic School Bus, Teletubbies, Looney Tunes, we could keep going. My favorites that are often overlooked are Scooby-Doo and Land Before Time. If you guys know anything about me, it's that I am a diehard Scooby-Doo fan. <laughs> a good example of the visual aspect of Kid Core would be like Lisa Frank where you have the bright rainbow, shiny, very cutesy aesthetic. When it comes to fashion, this aesthetic again is all about bright rainbow colors. So the more colors, the better. The fashion is inspired by things that like young kids or toddlers might wear, striped t-shirts, overalls, shorts, skorts, other basics, and the clothes are often oversized to emulate a child wearing hand-me-downs or playing dress up in their parents' clothes. There's lots of loud patterns like stripes, tie-dye, polka dots, and also color blocking is popular. Accessories are common in kid core, such as plastic jewelry, hair clips and scrunchies, friendship bracelets, mini purses, glittery nail polish, and jelly sandals. Imagine that you're a kid playing dress up and you can wear literally whatever you want without feeling self-conscious. There was an article I read for Rush.com that said you want to look cool through the eyes of a child. Some people combine kid core with other aesthetics like kawaii and decora. I'm not super informed on Decora or really any J fashion. Um, I'll touch on it a little bit, 
but I want to recommend Cyber Girl on TikTok and YouTube. She has a great uh, video essay about Kidcore and um, most of her content is like Decora. And again, I don't want to like talk about J fashion when I don't know what I'm talking about. So I want to mention it, but if you want like a more educated person to learn about J fashion from and Decora, check out Cyber Girl. Makeup can vary a lot within the aesthetic. So some people don't wear makeup at all because you're emulating a child and then other people kind of imitate how little kids uh, like play with makeup and they do uh, lip gloss and bright eyeshadow like the really colorful palettes you get from Claire's in the mall. There's people who do like dramatic eyeliner and big eyelashes to try to make their eyes look big almost like a cartoon character and this is more popular with like uh, Decora. Hair can be pretty much any color because you know kids have brown hair, blonde hair, black hair, red hair. Also some people will do bright vivid colors like pink or blue or yellow. My hair actually was pink and yellow but I changed it before I filmed this video. <laughs> And you often see hairstyles like pigtails, braids, and ponytails with fun hair accessories. The style can be pretty androgynous because it's based off children's clothing. I think it's cool because people of all genders enjoy kidcore. Like some of my other videos like Coquette and Soft Grunge, I talked about how the main demographic was women, um, but people of all genders uh, seem to enjoy kidcore. Not just feminine presenting people, also men, masculine, non-binary, gender fluid, anyone. And I think that's just because everyone can relate to the nostalgia of being a kid. I will note it is unfortunate that men and masculine people are often not encouraged to explore their fashion taste and if they do they get bullied for expressing themselves. Kidcore has some fashion influences from Y2K fashion but the Y2K aesthetic is more focused on being a teenager or a young adult in the 90s and 2000s. Y2K fashion features low-rise jeans, crop tops, and spaghetti straps, but kidcore fashion is more so high-waisted silhouettes and modest clothing because again, little kid. <laughs> When it comes to the origins of Kidcore, I first heard about it in 2020, I believe, because it was one of the many aesthetics that blossomed during the pandemic when everyone was on TikTok all day. There was this similar style at the time, kind of like late 2019. It was mislabeled as indie. They call themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. What a bunch of... <laughs> called indie like when I picture indie I think of indie rock bands from like the late 2000s I don't know the postal service like death cab for cutie arctic monkeys like going into almost a soft grunge vein I think of like hipster tumblr alternative style when I hear the word indie This 2020 indie aesthetic was just super saturated, low contrast photos that had nothing to do with indie music. It was similar to Kidcore, like I think there were people who liked both. They both featured bright colors, but Kidcore has a much more distinct style and a more niche following. Kidcore definitely gained traction in 2022, and I think that's when more people became aware of it. Again, there's lots of related and overlapping aesthetics like rainbow core, decora, weird core, clown core. What other cores? There's so many cores. Although Kidcore was popularized the last few years, you can definitely see a lot of influences and similarities to uh, 90s Harajuku street style uh, known as Decora. Decora is the definition of maximalism. You can never have too many accessories and there's really no rules when it comes to combining colors and patterns. It features bright colors, layered clothing, plastic accessories, stickers, and colorful makeup. 
I just wanted to mention Harajuku fashion and Decora because, you know, this isn't like something totally new that just sprang up three years ago. So now that everyone has an idea of what Kidcore is and what it looks like, I want to talk about why it's popular and why some people think it's weird. <laughs> I asked people on Tumblr why they like Kidcore and the general consensus was just people said that they like Kidcore as an escape from the horrors of daily life. It gives sort of a feeling of safety and nostalgia as well as just being fun. I think everyone is nostalgic for their childhood no matter what decade you grew up in. I mean, we have to listen to boomers talk about how great the 1950s were. Uh, in the 2010s, millennials expressed nostalgia for growing up in the 90s because there were countless posts and memes with the theme of only 90s kids remember. Millennials, of course, were eventually clowned on by Gen Z for having such pride in the decade they were born. But again, this feeling of nostalgia for your youth is not a new phenomenon. Kidcore isn't solely based off Y2K memories, but also incorporates themes from the 80s and 90s because Kidcore can feel like a nostalgia for a time Gen Z didn't get to experience at all. So like when we think about the 80s and 90s, we think about a more, I say carefree and wholesome, like America has never been wholesome. Kidcore can feel like a nostalgia for a time Gen Z didn't get to experience, a time that is seen as carefree and wholesome, an era that is pre-social media, pre-COVID, pre-housing crisis, pre-climate crisis. It makes sense that young people want to escape from these problems and recreate a simpler time that they feel robbed of. Like, can I afford to move out of my parents' house? No. But can I watch Land Before Time, The Mysterious Island, on VHS and eat my little apple slices? Absolutely. Another reason some people love Kidcore is because it's so different than the beige minimalistic style that has become popular in the last 10 years. Kidcore is maximalist and the total opposite of mainstream trends like Queen Girl. Another reason I saw mentioned on Tumblr, I just want to touch on this, um, I got a couple messages from neurodivergent people who said they like Kidcore because they have special interests that are seen as typically childish. I don't want to speak for autistic people because I'm not autistic, uh, but I have seen some TikToks where people express how frustrating it is to be autistic and be constantly told they need to grow up and stop enjoying childish things like toys and cartoons. If anyone watching this has any thoughts on Kidcore relating to neurodivergence, please leave a comment. So overall, I think the interest in Kidcore is mainly nostalgia, wanting a feeling of safety and escapism. Some of you might have clicked on this video or have been sitting here watching it and you're thinking, what the fuck? I've seen criticism and just bewildered reactions from people who don't participate in Kidcore, but I believe this is mostly due to misunderstanding. It makes me think, I was listening to an old episode of Violating Community Guidelines with Brittany Broski and Sarah Shower, and it was the episode where they were talking about furries and how furries are just widely misunderstood because like when people see something they don't understand they assume it's weird and assume it's a sex thing um, which I will mention in a minute. There's a lot of posts on TikTok and Tumblr that celebrate Kidcore and use the phrase healing my inner child. Healing your inner child is kind of a form of therapy that can help people who experience trauma, abuse, or neglect as children. Experiencing trauma as a child can cause you to grow up really fast because some kids are forced to act as a parent to themselves or take care of their siblings. 
So for many abuse or trauma survivors, their childhood was basically robbed from them. I think healing your inner child is great, but I want to add that you should, if it's accessible to you, um, seek out an actual therapist who can um, assist you while you are healing your inner child. They can, you know, help teach you healthy coping mechanisms and they're a trained professional. So like healing your inner child on your own is great. But if you have experienced trauma or abuse, I recommend going to a therapist. I want to add though, I don't think people need an excuse to like kid core. I don't think everyone needs to be healing their inner child. I think you can just like whatever you like. And I know I've said that in other videos, but I don't think there has to be some deep underlying pathology on why you like what you like. You know, you can just enjoy cartoons in bright colors. All right, police sirens, sound the sirens, alert, men ruin everything. Unfortunately, there are people, men, who sexualize and objectify people who enjoy childish things. I mentioned this in my Coquette video because Coquette features some childish fashion. It is not the fault of women or any person who dresses in an innocent childlike fashion. If you're a creep who fetishizes children, you're a piece of shit and you should be locked up. Some people use the excuse, oh well, it's a kink and you're kink shaming me. Fine, I'm, I'm kink shaming you. I think discussing kink culture is a nuanced discussion and I have so little authority on the subject. Uh, I'm on the asexuality spectrum, so ace alert, sound the siren. I know some people participate in age play because they consider it a way to heal trauma, but I feel like the vast majority of people, men, who say they like age play are just using it as an excuse to exploit others and rationalize their pedophilia. The fact that I even have to discuss sex in a video about kid core makes me so mad. Like, I'm making a video about people enjoying like cartoons and candy and stickers and I have to talk about how men are gross and ruin it. It's just very fucked up that there's so many people who see someone dressed in like pigtails and they're like, oh, it must be a sex thing. Like you're telling on yourself. However, I do wanna say there are toxic people out there who create content where they are dressing up as a little kid and sexualizing themselves. Um, I've seen, unfortunately, some women on TikTok who dress up and act like little kids and then link their OnlyFans and basically this is called pedo baiting because they are creating content aimed at pedophiles. It just, ugh, it makes me so mad that people are profiting off this because like what they're doing, the pedo baiting, that isn't kid core. Kid core is just a fun aesthetic. And what these creators um, are doing is completely different. I'm not against sex work. I'm not against OnlyFans creators. I'm just saying that I think it's unethical to capitalize off the fetishization of minors. So some final thoughts on the subject. In my other video essays, I usually try to address toxicity within aesthetics such as racism or promoting eating disorders. Y'all know I cannot make a single video without talking about bitches promoting eating disorders. I'm happy to say though that kid court is mostly free from the problems that I see in other aesthetics. Of course, there's always going to be toxic individuals. There's always going to be issues with an aesthetic and we can always strive to be more diverse. When researching this video, I saw photos of people of all different ethnicities and genders and abilities um, participating in this aesthetic. And my favorite thing is that I have seen no like eating disorder promotion within the kid core aesthetic. There's no pressure to be thin or restrict your eating habits because when you think about it, when you're a kid, hopefully you aren't 
counting calories or dieting. I really hope you're not. Kids just want to eat what they want to eat. They want candy and sugary cereal and chicken nuggets and junk food. I'm not saying that that's all you should eat. Obviously, you got to have some broccoli with the chicken nuggets. You got to eat a balanced diet. That's just part of being a human. But it's just refreshing to see an aesthetic where there's no shame attached to bad foods. There's no shame attached to eating dino chicken nuggets. Again, I really love kid core. I love the bright colors. I love cartoons. I watch Scooby-Doo. I have a huge VHS collection. I think we should all be able to enjoy whatever interests us. I, you know, crunch culture is dead. And I think we can all benefit from incorporating some childlike wonder into our everyday lives. I've heard mental health professionals actually talk about how important it is for adults to remember and relearn how to play. You know, we reach a certain point after our childhood where we stop playing. And when I say play, I mean, like, take that however you want. It can be playing a board game or video games or watching cartoons or just trying out a new craft. I don't know. I love kid core. I'll post some pictures. I have a shit ton of figurines and Barbies and stuffed animals. Like, I'm all in. <laughs> I'd love to hear people's thoughts about kid core in the comments. Um, tell me why you like it. Um, if you have issues with it, feel free to mention that, but let's remember to keep it civil. Um, I see you guys going at each other's throats in the comments sometimes. Also, please comment any aesthetics or, uh, subjects you would like me to discuss in the future. And I just want to say thank you again to everyone who watches my videos, who likes them, and who has subscribed to me because it is truly mind-blowing that, like, over 2,000 people like listening to me talk but yeah I love all you guys oh also I got my industrial piercing and it hurts so much um so if you want an industrial just know it's gonna fucking hurt for weeks forever thank you for watching um I'm going to eat apple slices and watch Finding Nemo bye